What's up makers, Mike Clifford here, and this time I'm industrial maker, I'm gonna show you the process for mixing GFRC in detail and how to create this really cool marbled concrete look, which is a little different than I've done in some of my past videos. And I'm gonna show you how to turn a small test slab of this marble concrete into this really cool marble serving tray. And actually I made two of those, one while I was out collaborating with Chris Salmoni and a second one back here. And so there's a little bit different processes we're gonna go through and some things I learned, but without further ado, let's get to it and start mixing up this concrete. And a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Care Of. We'll talk more about them later. I've put together a really simple concrete form. It's about five inches thick because it doesn't need to be that strong. Um, and I've got some details I'll link to up here for a video that shows you how to make the form if you want more details on that. But now we're gonna focus on how do you do the marble mix. So for this, I'm gonna use a Fishstone GFRC mix. GFRC can be poured super thin, has a ton of strength benefits. We're just gonna use a scale to measure this out. I'm gonna use about 20 pounds of mix. I probably won't need that much, but I always like to mix a little extra. You really need to mix GFRC evenly. And in order to do that, you're going to want to get a dedicated concrete mixer or at least a helical paddle on a drill and then mix in a bucket instead of a pan. So the next step is to measure out the water. For one 50 pound bag of GFRC mix, you use one gallon or 8.2 pounds. Since we only have 20 pounds or 40%, get a 3.28 is 40% of 8.2. With GFRC, you always want to add some water to the mix bucket first and then add the concrete mix to the water. But you wanna make sure that you don't have too much water in the mix, so I only add about 80% of the water to start out. Then I add about half the concrete and start mixing it up. And I'm just gonna go gradually back and forth adding concrete and then adding a little bit more water if need be until I get it to the right consistency for the pour. This is optional because there is already a plasticizer in the GFRC bag mix, but I like to add a little bit more plasticizer just to make it really fluid. And then I put the last of the concrete mix in and it's pretty cool. You can see after about 10 or 15 seconds, the plasticizer kick in and the sort of crumbly concrete becomes a fluid mix. And I'm just gonna show you really quickly the right consistency that you wanna go for with a GFRC mix. You want it to fall off the trowel and leave just a thin coat on the trowel. And that tells you it's thick enough to stick, but that it's thin enough to flow and evenly coat the surface. If you've seen my past videos, you know that I like to do a face coat, which is a thin layer of concrete without any fibers before putting a back coat with fibers into the form. However, for this one, I'm just gonna really simplify it and do one batch of concrete with fibers in it. And this is okay, you just wanna make sure you make it a very fluid mix, a slightly lower dosage of fibers, and then make sure you don't sand too aggressively when you pull your concrete out of the form because you don't want to expose the fibers. One thing you want to be doing regularly throughout the mixing process is using a trowel to scrape the sides of your bucket. The concrete powdered mix can get stuck to the sides of the bucket and if you don't scrape it off then you can get an uneven mix and you don't want that. The last step is adding the powder pigments, and I used a charcoal and a blue pigment in this one, but there are lots of different colors that you can use. And what I did is I just put it in and then used the trowel to kind of mix it in unevenly, making sure there were no big clumps that would lead to weak spots in the concrete, but leaving it still in a swirled pattern, which then would create the marble effect when you poured it into the form. Pouring the concrete is really straightforward because we have a small form. I just did it by hand wearing latex gloves and I recommend thicker eight or nine millimeter gloves because thinner ones I've had experience with can rip. And as you pack it in, you're just gonna use your fingers and really push it down into the corners to make sure you don't have any air bubbles there. 
GFR C-Mix already has a defoaming agent that really makes vibrating it unnecessary. However, with a small form, it can't hurt. So I went ahead and did that here. It also helps to level out the surface and then I can remove any excess to make sure that I get the surface completely level and reduce the amount of sanding that I need to do later. And you can see just from looking at the bottom of the pour, the kind of cool marbling effect you're getting. You're letting the concrete cure for 24 hours, you go back with diamond hand sanding pads and sand the bottom level using the sides of the form as a guide. Now, I went up to 400 grit, but you can really go as smooth as you want. And while I'm getting my workout sanding this down, let me take a minute and tell you about this video sponsor, Care of. Care of delivers personalized daily vitamin and supplement packs that help users maintain better personal health. When it comes to supplements, I didn't really know where to start, but Care of's online quiz made it easy to create a daily pack in under five minutes. I just took the quiz and then afterwards I got a personalized vitamin pack recommendation. And since care of consults doctors from universities like harvard and tufts i just went with their recommendation a few days later my custom vitamin packs arrived with a personal greeting inside and then the rest is easy the simplicity of the daily pack made it easy for me to integrate into my morning routine i've been taking my supplements for two weeks now and i'm obviously not a doctor but i do feel like i have a little more pep in my step I also really like the daily quote or challenge that's on each pack. The title of a movie about my life. Hmm. Well, maybe I should let my subscribers figure that one out for me. Care of is offering 25% off the first month for my subscribers. Just go to takecareof.com or the link in the video description below and use the code MEDUSTRIAL to get 25% off your first month. Now back to the concrete. After we've sanded the underside flush using the sides of the form as a guide, we just unscrew the sides, use a mallet to knock them loose, remove any excess silicone, and see what we've got. Next, we're going to use a super easy technique to sand the concrete. Just get a spray bottle and wet sand with 400 grit sandpaper. Now, there's just two things to note about sanding here. One, you want to wait at least an hour after demolding because sometimes the surface of the concrete is a little tender right after you pour it out of the form and you don't want to over sand. Two, you know when you've sanded enough and it doesn't take much because you'll feel the actual surface change and the texture of the melamine disappear under your hand. The last step is to apply concrete sealer and I just used a really simple acrylic sealer for this one that you just wipe on with the rag. And the only thing to know is to make sure that it doesn't stay pooled on the surface and that's it. When I tell people how to get into GFRC, and concrete generally, I say you should always start with a small test slab just to get a feel for the process before scaling up. And this serving tray is gonna be a great little project for that test slab. The idea here is that we're just going to make a wooden frame, similar to a picture frame with cutouts that serve as handles. My first attempt at this was while I was out collaborating with Chris Salamone in Los Angeles. And I made it way harder than I needed to do that. So I think we've all made this mistake. And if you haven't, maybe you can learn from me here. You know those times that you know the perfect tool for the job, but that perfect tool has something involved with it that's gonna take you a little bit to set up. And there's another tool that is just sitting there waiting to be used without any setup, and you just wanna start cutting. And so you go for it, and then you realize once you're already past the point of no return that you've just spent three times as long because you didn't take that 15 minutes to set up. Well, that's what happened here. I knew the router table was the best tool to make the chamfers for the frame, to make the cutouts for the handles, and to make the rabbit for the tray to sit in. But it was buried under Chris's joiner and planer, and I didn't want to get it out. And the table saw was just sitting there, and so was the CNC. And so I decided to use those, and that led to three main mistakes. So the first thing was that I was using the CNC to cut out the handle. This wasn't a mistake per se, it just took me about 50 minutes to cut these out and it would have taken one minute on the router table. Second, the table saw was far from ideal for cutting the chamfered edges and making the rabbit in such thin pieces of hard maple. It took more passes due, there was greater margin for error, and yeah, this happened. And the third mistake there was that the chamfers being cut on the table saw with pieces that were that thin before gluing up the frame 
meant that we didn't have perpendicular corners to clamp against when we were gluing up the frame, and so the glue up was just really challenging and took way longer than it should have for a simple frame. Now despite those, I think this one came out okay as you'll see in the end, but when I got back to Chicago, I wanted to see how much time could be saved by doing the frame for the marble top the right way. Needless to say, it turned out to be a lot. All I did this time was made a square picture frame, and I made this one from bamboo plywood that I had lying around. I glued it together before cutting anything else. So after the glue up, then I took it to the router table to make the handle cutouts. And then use the battery power router to chamfer the edges. Since the bamboo plywood was too thin to cut a rabbit to support the marble top, I just used some scrap plywood pieces and a nail gun to attach them to the inside of the frame to support the marble top. And you'll never see these, so the rabbit was really unnecessary and this works fine. All right guys, that's a wrap on this one. I'm pretty happy how it came out and I hope you guys learned a thing or two and maybe can put some of these techniques to use in your own projects. If you like this, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get notified about my future builds and definitely make sure to hit the thumbs up button on this video if you made it this far because it really does help me out and I greatly appreciate it. That's it for this time and I'll see you next time.